Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Like I said, the weather's been pretty screwy, but we know spring is gonna be right around the corner. We're gonna start hearing some grouse drumming. I'm getting reports that people are actually hearing turkeys gobbling. It's starting to happen, right? If you walk outside, you may even see the geese flying north already. We happen to stop by Lily Lake. Now check this out. We were standing next to a gentleman who said he's lived there for 40 years. He's never seen snow geese on Lily Lake. Now we were fortunate enough to get some video of them and then we noticed an eagle in a tree and then all of a sudden this happened. The eagle was circling. We thought he was gonna go after one of the snow geese. He hit the water, came up with what looks like a fish, flies right over the snow geese and gave us a beautiful show. Now that was at Lily Lake. This time of year, typically at Middle Creek, there's anywhere from 100,000 to 200,000 snow geese. This year, the best they could do is 70, and the people in charge over there are saying, it's really pretty messed up. They expected many more, and they're not getting them. We were there when 70,000 geese flew over our head. And you're gonna hear from Lauren Ferrari. So what are they waiting for? So it's a little colder this morning, so I think you know, a lot of times they're just kind of warming up. You see a lot of them are flapping their wings, trying to get kind of reacclimated to uh, getting ready to take off. That's what they're going to be doing next. They're going to be leaving here, usually in groups of a few hundred, sometimes a thousand, and they're going to be going out to the fields to feed either at Middle Creek or right. nearby. So the one, we, we actually have some shots of them getting up, doing a little circle yeah. and landing. It's all part of the staging kind of thing, is that I it? I think so, yeah. It's, I think, like I said, a lot of times they take these like warm-up flights a little bit. But a, sometimes if there is a predator nearby, that will definitely spark them kind of getting up. The eagles definitely help to create a show for everybody. Um, kind of safety in numbers for them if they take off and disorient the predator that might near, be nearby. But, um, yeah, I think it's just kind of these like quick flights to help them get like kind of rejuvenated enough to take a, a longer flight potentially. What are you estimating again out here about? It's probably just shy of 70,000, I would say. Um, it's kind of, I have like a little knob I count from and it helps me get perspective on how spread out they are compared okay. to how condensed they are and that really helps. Um, but just based off the size of the, by the time the season, midway season comes by, you can um, figure out, you know, based on the actual size of the, the blob of snow geese, right. roughly how many there are. It's like a tourist attraction. I mean, I've seen Absolutely. people up there with, with all kinds of cameras and stuff. What brings them here? First of all, turn around right yep. now, if you would. Look at this. Where else in right now would you be seeing this? I don't know of anywhere else is Look the at, answer it, <laughs> to the question. It looks like every one of them will be officially off the water, if not Close. pretty much to it. We have the opportunity to experience something. Listen to that noise, just listen. That never gets old. Nope. No, I've worked here for six years and have been privileged to have the opportunity to see this every single year. and. I travel a little bit and see as much wildlife as I can, and I've never, I've never seen anything like it. So. Well, let me ask you, why here? Why do they land here pretty much every year? So it's sort of a, a perfect situation that we have the lake for them to what we say roost on, so they feel safe away, away from predators, so they can uh, have this home for the night. And then we also have this component of agriculture in the surrounding areas. Uh, that they can feed on during the day. So it's this constant flux of feeding, resting, just preparing for their next uh, next journey. Uh, and so we have everything they need and it's a one-stop shop. So um, the congregation of these geese in this one single area though is what makes it so unique. They're actually doing damage, right? A lot, sure. of, a lot of them, way too many of them. Yeah, so snow geese have the opposite problem that a lot of species do where they're most, a lot of species are in decline, uh, approaching that threatened or endangered status. Snow geese are actually overpopulated. So their numbers, they estimate somewhere between 12 and 20 million worldwide. Um, and they used to be in peril, really only 2,000 in the early 1900s. Um, so because of the changes in agriculture, they have really have had uh, the ability to feed more so, and it's really allowed them to, their populations to grow. And the reason that that is problematic is not so much here in Pennsylvania because we have the components that they need to survive during their migration, but where they breed in the tundra, 
that soil there is not as fertile as you would see here in Lancaster County. Um, our fields here will come back next year just fine, but in the tundra, they're really starting to eat themselves out of house and home and really starting to degrade the habitat that it's affecting other species that rely on that habitat as well. So if they're not hitting their, what we call carrying capacity, they're pretty near close. Yeah, and that's why a very liberal hunting season for them in Pennsylvania. Correct, yeah, so we have the regular hunting season that uh, happens during waterfowl hunting, but there's also this extended, what we call con snow goose conservation season that actually runs um, through February uh, all the way to April. So that allows uh, people who are hunting to help to control those populations. Uh, it's one step that we can take to try to help uh, their breeding grounds in the tundra is keeping those numbers in check. All summer long in the tundra, where do they start their migration? Because they're on their way back. Why don't we see them in the, you know, why don't we see them in the, in the, in, in the, the fall. Uh, in the fall? So usually they're a lot more spread out. So if you look at where they're breeding in Canada, it is across most of the northern tiers of Canada. Um, so they're much more spread out. So you might hear them coming over in the fall, but usually they're following the coastline south. So they're going to start stopping at those coastal, a lot of coastal uh, national wildlife refuges, um, but they feed mostly on the coast, starting to head into the Chesapeake Bay, down into this um, south, North and South Carolina. So those are the places that they're over winter. But then when they come back north, they start to concentrate more because um, they're all going back at the same time. Whereas in the fall, they're all kind of leaving at different times. So. Um, plus, on the way south, they deplete those resources, a lot of the food available in the coastal salt marshes, so now they look a little bit more inland for uh, more food and more places to, to stay for the night. So we're here the last weekend in February. Best guess, how long are they going to stick around? Yeah, it's always hard. Uh, I wish I had a, a crystal ball for some of these things, but it's really weather-based. And looking at the extended forecast, we're going to consistently be um, having more spring weather in the 50s. So as soon as, um, usually the Finger Lakes is their next destination, as soon as the Finger Lakes are open, unfrozen, there's no snow covering fields in New York, they're going to keep moving. So I think uh, we have roughly 70 to 90,000 birds here this morning. I would uh, think that after this week, we're going to start to see those numbers go down. They'll probably still be coming through for the next two weeks or so. So that happened. They had 70,000 geese this year, but now the numbers are changing, dwindling. Tundra swans are coming and going very quickly. If you want to follow them, you could very easily go to the Pennsylvania Game Commission website and go to Wildlife and Watching Wildlife. Very easy to find that. There's also a live camera that you could go on and you could also learn about their migration. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. <music> 